Welcome to Vega, Anson. I'm Captain Lukakis, squadron leader of the 53rd Hammerheads. You've been assigned to our unit. The Hammerheads are a space superiority squadron. We'll be flying the Myrmidon fighter, developed to replace the old GTF Ulysses. The Myrmidon is a Terran Vasudan design and a versatile ship with high marks for speed, maneuverability, armor, and loadout. The 53rd Hammerheads were formed during the Great War. At the time, we served on board the GTD Bastion, the finest ship in the history of Terran space travel. You may not know this, but the pilots who destroyed the ST Lucifer in 2335 were based on the Bastion, and some were even Hammerheads. With the 53rd, you're part of a long and proud tradition. When the explosion of the Lucifer collapsed the jump node to the Sol system and severed all contact with Earth, Command transferred the Bastion to the 4th Fleet in Vega. Since then, we've called Vega our home. Now Command has decommissioned the Bastion and reassigned its squadrons to the newer Hecate destroyers. We'll be joining the GTD Aquitaine, flagship of the 3rd Fleet, Capella. The Aquitaine will be here in 36 hours. In the meantime, it would be advisable to review your training. We have all the simulator modules you'll need for the Myrmidon fighter. These modules will give you a refresher course on such basics as your head-up display, throttle controls, and targeting. If you need to review your training, now would be a good time to do so. Because this is your first combat assignment, you'll be authorized to carry the standard armaments. The Subak HL-7, the Tempest Dumbfire, and the Rakai heat-seeking missile. These weapons are covered in the training modules and in the Tech Room database. As you gain experience in combat, you will be authorized to use more advanced weaponry. Good luck, pilot, and welcome again to the 53rd. Welcome to Training Simulator Module TSM-103C, Class C qualification for the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. This module has been designed to acquaint pilots with basic targeting, throttle, and weapon systems. TSM units are approved for use as part of the GTVA combat training program or as a review for qualified pilots. The TSM series is not intended as a substitute for actual field training. Welcome to Module TSM-103C, Pilot. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. The first function you will learn is targeting. Target my fighter. In the lower left-hand corner of your HUD is your target view. The top lines display the targeted ship's name and class. The next line shows the distance to your target and its speed. Note the brackets around my ship indicating I am your current target. As I fly out of view, the off-screen indicator will display. It points in the direction you must turn in order to face your target. The indicator moves as I fly around. It is always pointing at your target. Notice how the triangles separate. The farther apart they are, the farther you'll have to turn to face your target. Finally, note the number by the indicator. This is the distance to your target. The circular gauge near the bottom of your HUD is the radar. Friendly ships are shown in green. Hostile ships appear in red. Ships directly in front of you appear in the radar center. Using your main flight controller, turn your ship toward mine. Stop when my ship is in your center reticle. Good. Now stay in that position. Now turn toward my ship again. Match my speed. Good. Now follow me. Note how your speed automatically changes to match mine. To the left of the reticle is the speed gauge. The capital M next to the current speed indicates that you are matching speed with your target. Now, I want you to accelerate and move to within 125 meters of me. Do not collide with my ship. Good. Now, decelerate to drop 200 meters behind me. Well done. 
Now let's practice using the afterburner. Engage your afterburner pilot. The gauge to the left of your speed gauge displays remaining afterburner power. Note that your engines consume it rapidly. That extra speed is useful for quick evasive maneuvers and closing large distances. Maintain your maximum top speed. Try it now. Now, bring your fighter to a complete stop. Drone 1 has jumped in. Target it. Good. Now fly within 100 units of it and come to a stop. Be careful not to fly too fast. Well done. Note that it takes some time to come to a complete stop. Now fire your primary weapon at Drone 1. Hit it a few times, but do not destroy it. Near the center of your HUD, the hull integrity of your target is displayed. Notice that it has dropped from 100%. This information is also available in the upper right corner of your target view. Now, destroy Drone 1. Good job. Let's see how quickly you can destroy these new drones. Target hostiles and destroy them with your Subak HL-7. The HL-7 is standard issue on all Mirvidon space superiority fighters. Module TSM-103C. Most sorties will end with an order to return to base. Do not leave the field of engagement until you have been authorized to do so. Your navigation computer will be programmed with the proper coordinates. All you need to do is engage your subspace drive. Do this now. Well done, pilot. You have successfully completed TSM-103C Class C qualification for the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. You may now proceed to Training Simulator Module TSM-103B. Welcome to Training Simulator Module TSM-103B Class B Qualification for the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. This module has been designed to acquaint pilots with advanced targeting controls, weapon systems, and rearming procedures. TSM units are approved for use as part of a GTVA combat training program or as a review for qualified pilots. The TSM series is not intended as a substitute for actual field training. Welcome to Module TSM-103B, pilot. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. Begin by targeting my fighter. In combat, you will need to acquire your targets quickly. With multiple wings and warships, you will not have time to cycle through all objects in sensor range to find a specific target. Let's take a look at some controls that will help you locate targets more efficiently. Two drones will be used for the first part of this exercise. You have a targeting control which enables you to acquire the nearest hostile target. Using the control repeatedly will cycle through hostile targets in order of their proximity. Target Drone 1 with your hostile targeting control. Good. Now target Drone 2. Excellent. Now we'll learn another useful targeting control. As a GTVA fighter pilot, you will be called upon to defend larger vessels, from troop transports to destroyer-class warships. For this simulation, 
let's bring in a Triton class freighter. Observe that the name and hull integrity of the freighter appears in the box to the right of your reticle. This escort list enables you to monitor its status. You can target ships on your escort list by using the escort targeting control. Target the freighter now. Well done. On any escort mission, it is important that you stay close to vessels you have been assigned to protect. The escort targeting control makes locating these ships more efficient. Be advised, the escort list will not be limited to ships you have been ordered to protect. Any major target, friendly or hostile, could appear on that list. This will help you monitor the status of ships with tactical or strategic importance. Let's review what we've covered so far. Target Drone 1 with your hostile targeting control. Now, target Drone 2. Now, target the freighter with your escort targeting control. Well done. In Module TSM 103C, you practice firing your HL-7. We'll now take a closer look at your primary and secondary weapons. Your weapon's loadout is displayed to the right of your reticle. Primary cannons are listed above your secondary missile banks. Use your primary weapon selector to toggle either one or both cannons to fire. Firing both primaries will inflict more damage, but will also drain more energy from your fighter's reserves. The Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter has three missile banks. As a new pilot, you will be authorized to use the Tempest Dumbfire and the Rock Eye Heat Seeker. Let's practice firing the Tempest. Use your secondary weapon selector to arm your bank of Tempest missiles. Good. Tempests are dumb fire projectiles. These warheads have no homing system, so they'll fly in the direction in which they are fired. For this reason, they are most effective at close range. Unless your aim is very precise, hitting targets at a distance with a Tempest may be difficult. Now, select Drone 1 using your hostile targeting control. Good. Destroy Drone 1 with your Tempest missiles. Close your distance if you need to. Well done. The Tempest may not be as accurate as a heat or aspect-seeking missile, but a Myrmidon can carry up to 320 of these missiles. A volley of Tempests will quickly pulverize an enemy fighter. To maximize their effectiveness, use them in conjunction with your Subak HL-7. While the lasers penetrate the shields of your target, the missiles will impact the enemy's hull. Let's move on to the Rock Eye Heat Seeker. Arm the Rock Eye with your secondary weapon selector. Well done. Now target Drone 2. When you fire the Rock Eye, the missile's tracking system will lock onto the heat signature of your target. Be aware the homing radius of the Rock Eye is limited, and your target must be near the center of your HUD. Destroy Drone 2 using your Rock Eye missiles. Nice shooting, pilot. Compared to the Tempest, the Rock Eye is more accurate and has a greater effective range. However, the Myrmidon can carry no more than 20 Rock Eyes. You can also toggle double fire mode to launch twice the ordnance. You will inflict more damage and increase your chances of hitting the target, but your missiles will be depleted more rapidly in double fire mode. We will now send in more drones so you can practice firing missiles. Be sure to toggle between banks so you can get a feel for both the Tempest and the Rock Eye. When you run low on missiles, you need to rearm your fighter. To do this, you must call in a support ship. First, press the communications key to bring up your messaging window. 
followed by the 5 key to rearm. Deploying support In ship order now. for the support ship Please to dock, you must bring your fighter to a complete stop. The support ship will then automatically dock with you. In the lower portion of your HUD, an indicator displays the support ship's ETA. The support ship's primary purpose is twofold. First, it will reload your secondary weapons and countermeasures. Second, the support ship is capable of making minor repairs to your ship. It can fully repair any damaged or destroyed subsystem. However, the support ship cannot repair your hull. Keep in mind, a support ship can only load as many weapons as it has on board. It may not be enough to completely rearm your fighter. Rearming complete, sir. We You're covered a lot go. in this module. If you need to review this material, replay the simulation. Otherwise, you are qualified to proceed to TSM 103A. Engage your subspace drive. Well done, pilot. You have successfully completed TSM 103B Class B qualification for the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. You may now proceed to Training Simulator Module TSM 103A. Welcome to Training Simulator Module TSM 103A Class A qualification for the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. This module has been designed to acquaint pilots with dogfighting techniques. TSM units are approved for use as part of the GTVA Combat Training Program or as a review for qualified pilots. The TSM series is not intended as a substitute for actual field training. Welcome to Module TSM 103A, Pilot. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. This simulation will cover dogfighting techniques. You will be required to use many of the skills you learned in the preceding modules, such as targeting, matching speed, and primary and secondary weapons control. Begin by targeting my fighter. You can either use your basic targeting control or your friendly targeting control. You'll notice as I move, a circular indicator moves in front of my ship. That is the lead indicator. It shows you where you need to fire your primary weapon to hit your target. Now, target the drone. You can use your basic targeting control or your hostile targeting control. The target box in the lower left-hand corner of the HUD displays the distance to and hull integrity of your target. Your target's hull strength is also shown in the lower part of your reticle. As I shoot the drone, watch its hull integrity drop slowly. A good dogfighting tactic is matching speeds with your target. I want you to match speeds with the drone. Good. Your throttle can be set to automatically match the speed of your target, even as your targets change. Use your auto matching control to toggle this feature on or off. Good. You should be on the move at all times during a dogfight. Now, destroy the drone. Don't forget, you also have missiles. Two new unarmed drones have arrived. Destroy both of them. Remember to match their speed. using auto-targeting. 
This will automatically target your nearest hostile after your current target has either left the area or has been destroyed. Good job! This drone is armed. It will start firing upon you in 10 seconds. Destroy it. You have successfully qualified on the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. Engage your subspace drive. Congratulations, pilot. You have successfully completed TSM 103A, Class A qualification for the Myrmidon Space Superiority Fighter. Congratulations, pilot. You have successfully completed... This is Admiral Petrog, commanding officer of the GTD Aquitaine. For those squadrons joining us here in Vega, welcome aboard. With a complement of 150 combat spacecraft, the Aquitaine serves as flagship of the GTVA 3rd Fleet, based in the Capella system. You join an elite crew of 10,000, the finest officers and enlisted personnel serving the Alliance today. After 18 months of fighting, Admiral Bosch's Neo-Terran front has become the most significant threat to regional security since the Great War ended 32 years ago. The NTF demands the independence of their systems and the revocation of the Beta Aquilae Convention, or BATAC. The BATAC Treaty centralized power of the GTBA as the supreme authority in Terran Vesudan space. Integral to NTF ideology is Bosch's vision of Neo-Terra. A utopian society where the lost grandeur of Earth will be restored. Bosch and his followers oppose any alliance with the Vasudans as a threat to the future human race. The rebels are entrenched in Polaris, Regulus, and Sirius. But before we hit these strongholds, we must secure Epsilon Pegasi, Alpha Centauri, and Deneb. These contested systems are now the focal point of Allied operations. Allied Command has ordered the Aquitaine into the Deneb system. There, we will reinforce the 13th Vesudan Battle Group, led by the GVD Samtic. 
Both the NTF and the GTBA have sustained heavy casualties in the battle for Deneb. In the past 72 hours, we have lost the GBC Andromeda, the GTC Trafalgar, and over 15 fighter wings. Command anticipates the arrival of the Aquitaine and the Samtic will shift the battle for Deneb in our favor and force the NTF to withdraw to Sirius. This is Captain Lukaka, squadron leader of the 53rd Hammerheads. At 0320 hours, the Aquitaine entered the Deneb system. Admiral Petrarch launched fighter and bomber wings as part of an all-out attack against NTF positions throughout the system. He has kept the Hammerheads on standby until now. A situation is developing near the inhabited planet of Cygnus Prime. We have over 100,000 Basudan refugees fleeing their colonies in transports. Allied ships are rescuing the Basudans as quickly as possible, though the logistics of this operation leave many refugees still vulnerable to rebel attack. At 0545, we received a distress signal from a refugee convoy 900 clicks, or kilometers, from the outer orbit of Cygnus Prime. The Vasudans responded with a wing of Serapis fighters, designated Epsilon, which have just called in for reinforcements. Alpha Wing, you're going in. Because these transports do not have jump drives, you must protect the convoy until a recovery ship arrives. With all warships engaged and other convoys in dire need of protection, we do not know when a craft will become available. Command will keep you updated and send in reinforcements as needed. Alpha 2 here. I have a visual on the convoy, 1,500 meters dead ahead. The escort wing is down two fighters. Iota Transports, this is Alpha Wing of the 53rd Hammerheads, GTD Aquitaine. We have orders to protect your convoy. What's your status? Over. Alpha Wing, we have lost three transports to the Rebel attack. The surviving vessels have sustained modern damage. We anticipate the Rebels will return in greater force. Hang in there, Iota. Command will send a recovery craft as soon as possible. All right, Alpha, let's get to work. We must defend these transports until the recovery ship arrives. Sensors picking up incoming hostiles. A wing of Herc's closing in. Alpha 1 and 2, intercept those fighters. We will defend the ramp.
We have transmitted your coordinates to the GPD Samtic. The vessel should be exiting subspace momentarily. Subspace. We have vectored its course to your immediate vicinity. Acknowledged, Command. We will intercept the target. Incoming jump signature. It's the Belisarius. Gunnery control. Power of photon beam cannons. Commence plasma core insertion. All units stand clear of the Samtic and Belisarius. Belisarius, this is the GVD Samtic. You are ordered to power down and surrender. Negative, Basudan. The NTF is the only legitimate authority in this system. Surrender or be destroyed, Belisarius. This is your final warning. Your posturing insults us both, Basudan. I will not give up my ship. As you wish. Gunnery control, open fire. Belisarius objective has been neutralized. Now deploying wing Zeta and Theta. You are relieved of your escort, Alpha Wing. Mission accomplished, Alpha. Return to base. Well done, pilots. Good work, pilot. You held off the rebel attack and saved both Basudan transports from destruction. Your squad mates and I all agree, you'll make a fine addition to the 53rd Hammerheads. Command reports that 75% of the refugees have been recovered with few casualties. The remaining 25% are under Allied protection and will be rescued shortly. We've also won major victories against the NTF. The NTD Jacobus and the NTC Hanks have been destroyed, and our blockades of the Alpha, Centauri, and Sirius jump nodes has isolated the rebel fleet. Furthermore, 600,000 ground troops will soon land on the surface of Cygnus Prime in our effort to retake the planet. Prepare for your next mission, pilot. The battle for Deneb is not over yet. 